So, uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Juan Jomata, and I'm super nervous right now. So, <laughs> uh, let's just uh, get to the to the meat of it. So, essentially, uh, this talk came out when I, uh, a few of us were talking to to Rich about uh, the opportunity of doing this presentation, and we wanted to find something that added value and that we thought it would be a good advice from someone that is basically fresh new into the into the industry and how a bit of our ways into it were and we in this conversation in the pub we we were basically talking on and on about these things that we will hear advices that everyone will give us to give us visibility to have uh to make a difference to have our cv to make uh to make stands out compared to other people and we came to the conclusion that we will hear these things over and over but they were not such hard lines and they were not things that we needed to follow to get our heads into our first job. And that's why I call this how I did not get into pen testing. This is not how I found my job. And I want to argue a bit about these myths of things that everyone tells you that you have to do. And maybe you don't have to do them in order to get your head into this industry. So... Let's go over it, um, because I'm doing a bit of like the opposite recommendations here. I wanted to do like the opposite way of doing a presentation. I'm going to start by the end. This is the takeaway of, the, um, of what I want to say today. And it's basically that all the things that we're going to discuss, they're really interesting. They add a lot of value to your, uh, to, to your uh, possibilities of getting your first job. But at the same time, they... If you want to do them, do them for the right reasons. Do them because they add value to you, they add a meaningful experience to you, and it's something that you're really enjoying. Because if you do these things just because someone has told you, you have to do them and you hate them, it's not going to be a nice experience, and I'm sure that there is a lot of things that you're not sure that you're already doing that add a lot of value, and you will be very good. Uh, you will be well doing uh, by highlighting them to your potential employer and say, look, there is value in what I do. This is the things I enjoy and these are the things I love doing. And this is why I think this is a good thing for me and my profile. First of all, be a CTF master, having CVs fresh out of uni, being the best hacker in town, being super good at tech. Look, you already have a degree, maybe a master's, maybe a PhD, I don't know. You've already done a lot of stuff that has given you the base understanding of a lot of different technologies that will give you the skills to adapt and will give you the possibility of getting uh, something new, work with it, and then uh, move along and just use that in your, in your employment. It's very good that if you like uh, CTF, you like the competition, it's great. Again, nothing against that. But you don't have to be an expert in anything from your first day of the job. And it's really okay to say, look, I don't know about that. How do I get more information about it? Can you teach me? What do you need me to know by Monday? And then you go, you do the research, you learn about that, and then you apply it. That's fine. Don't try to be an expert and don't try to talk more than you actually know about something because it's very obvious. And again, specifically for my field, Doing a CTF is not doing pen testing. There is a lot more layers into it from the consultancy point of view and also all these cryptic web challenges where you find this base 75 encoded cookie that you just have to guess that that's a password for whatever super hidden login page in a web. It's there. That's not real life. That's not the kind of stuff you're going to find in real life. It's super fun. I love to do them, but really it's not a must, like, for example, writing a blog. A lot of people will tell you, yeah, write a blog, practice your, um, your writing skills, you will put yourself out there, you will, you will show people what is the kind of stuff that you're researching into, that's fine, if you love it, but you have to be aware, it's a very time-consuming thing, and also try to do it because it adds some value to you, and it adds some value to the community, because again, there is like 5,000 different blog posts about how to use, to use MMAP, try to do something different, not just try to do a blog for the sake of having a blog and tweeting about you having a blog and not doing anything meaningful. Try to add meaning to anything you do. I think that's the most important thing. But of course, it will show if you like it. 
it shows that you have a lot of commitment and you can write and you can sit down and address an audience and things like that. So as in the disclaimer, lots of value into it. Don't do it if you, don't ha if you hate it because there is a lot of more different ways of practicing, for example, your writing skills or your reporting skills. And we'll come to that later. Uh, presenting conferences. Hi. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's a good experience to have. I, I won't deny it. But I work with people that have literally told me, look, I hate presenting. I, I hate standing in front of an audience of 50 people and trying to put a message through because it really gets me nervous. I'm a really introvert person. Full disclosure here, introvert is not the same as insecure, is not the same as shy. You shouldn't be insecure when you have, for example, to address a client or a board of people and explain what security problems they have. You shouldn't be shy if you're confident of what you are saying is right and you have to make your point. But there's people that just don't like doing this. And it's okay for them saying, look, I don't want to go to a conference and present. A uh, really important thing is that we usually look at people that are presenting as the only people that stand out in the industry. And we tend to think that those are the only people that are working in the industry. And I know a lot of really, really good security professionals that will never stand where I am and speak about anything because they cannot be bothered doing it, because they don't enjoy it, because they for whatever reason, they, they will, will be rather than doing other things. You can be a really good professional without being a public speaker, although, again, it's a really good skill. Um, and yeah, um, I don't know, there's some people also you will find in conferences, I'm sure you, you will, uh, there will be some names popping in your names, if you probably know some of them, that just want to talk about something. If you have nothing to present, please don't present. Don't just do a presentation for the sake of having your name in a print and say you want to present. Please don't do it. I don't think it adds any value at all. Be active on Twitter. Yes, I don't have a Twitter account. Well, I do have a Twitter account. Last time I tweeted was in 2017, if I'm correct. Why is that? Because I don't have an opinion on everything. I don't consider myself an expert on basically anything apart from harmonicas. We can talk about that later. But um, yeah, everyone is entitled to their opinion, but I feel that networks like Twitter force people to have an opinion on everything. And I think that that can develop a bit of a toxic mentality about it. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff about Twitter. There, it's a really good information feed if you know who to follow and how to take in that information. But you have to be aware that there is a confirmation bias that will build around because you will only follow people that you agree with and then you will have an idea and those people will be tweeting adults about those same thoughts and you're like, everyone thinks exactly like me. Yeah, your Twitter list, you maybe follow 2,000 people, let's say. Uh, the algorithm shows you 50 people out of those 2,000 people and from that timeline and the time you have during the day to look at your timeline, you're going to probably read tweet about, tweets about 10 people. That's your everyone thinks about me. It's literally 10, 15, 50 people at best. So be aware of that. Be careful about that. And uh, again, the people you follow the same way that the public speakers you, you will see are people that have been in the industry for a long time, have been doing that kind of stuff a long time. It's a bit daunting. It gives you a bit of vertigo to compare yourself to them. Just, be, just uh, bear in mind that those are not everyone. And yeah, it's good to aspire to that, but it's not good trying to be like them from day one. It's okay to be a noob. And just <laughs> be aware of that. Uh, contributing to open source projects. Um, again, really positive. If you love coding, go for it. If you want to collaborate with a project you love, go for it. It's really, really positive experience. And uh, for sure, having coding skills in any tech-related uh, job is basically a must. You, I, I would say, like from from, uh, from the point of view of um, um, a person that works in offensive security, the more I've learned about how to develop software, the more I've learned about how to make it fail and how to make those fails to work to my advantage. But yeah, I don't personally agree with uh, when people like put their Git, like it's compulsory to have your GitHub account in your CV because that means that in your extra hours you have to invest so much time and it requires a lot of commitment. I don't know if you saw that joke there. I, I will hope someone will laugh as I see that no one did. So 
that's fine. Uh, thank you, Richard. So <laughs> essentially, um, if you try to contribute to a project, mostly big projects, be aware that you will have to put yourself in the mind of the people that are running the project. You will get a lot of rejections from the code you want to push into that platform. It's a really, really discouraging thing you want to have spent two or three weeks developing code for some project you love. And they say, actually, that's not how we name variables. And they will just throw that into the garbage. And you have to start over. Do it if you love it, but be prepared for it being a tough thing that is going to consume a lot of your time. And well, I don't want anyone ever to take what I say just because I say it. Because again, I'm, I'm a person that has been in industry for less than three years. And I don't want anyone to take my word for it. So what I'm going to do now is to put a real example. This are the people I see the faces of in the office every single day. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, uh, this is in, a, in one of our team building exercises where we are sharing uh, a pizza, as you can see here. And uh, all of them are great, great security professionals. We can see people like, for example, David, which is an amazing guy with a really, really structured mind. He will find any ways of breaking a web application and just do whatever he wants. Willem, he has an amazing develop, uh, developer background. He will understand what best codec practices are and which are not, and find problems there. Uh, Alex, for example, he's amazing and like, uh, internals and things all related to Windows and all different types of technologies. Oh, it's, in a pool. Yeah. It's, like it's a miracle, isn't it? <laughs> four years pool. Yeah. And, uh, and finally, Charlie, which is kind of our, the manager of our office. And any anytime I have any doubt, I go and talk to him. He will put me right into something I need to know. And it's really, really amazing people. And the more I, I share work experience with them, the more I realize that each of us has such a different background. And more importantly, none of us did the things that I've been talking about. So for sure, there is a way of finding value in what you do and doing the things you love and showing that to your employer and say, these things actually make me someone you want to hire. And it's not this list of things that you have to do. You don't have to do, uh, have a blog. It's nice if you, if you want, but you don't have to. And um, yeah. This is, by the way, real examples. Um, David doesn't have a Twitter account. Willem participated with a, with a, uh, in a, on a CTF with me once. Never again. Um, <laughs> I've tried to do pull requests to big uh, software projects. Never actually got one accepted. Uh, Alex hates presenting as much as anything in the world. And Charlie had a blog, but as many of us who had a blog at some point, after a few posts, it just fell into the SEO hell and died. And this is the real example I wanted to pull through about the things I've been saying. This is my personal experience. You can disagree with me. It's fine. This is only mm, the path I found myself into the industry. Uh, so finally, this just the last words. This is a little story about how I got where I am right now. I'm Spanish. If you haven't realized, I'm not from here for my beautiful and long name. Uh, I did computer science in Spain. Then I moved to Edinburgh. I did the master's in cyber here in Napier, uh, the advanced security of, and digital forensics master with uh, Richard here on the, behind the wheel. Um, when, I, when I was here, I started going to conferences, meetups. I started uh, participating in CTFs. I joined NUSEC, the Security Society. And that's where I met with Charlie, Alex, Willem, and lots of people I've been shaking hands with again and hugging uh, today when I have came back here after six months. I've, oh, sorry. Um, but yeah, it's been great to be back here and, and recognizing faces and see that people still do stuff like that. And I, I met with like-minded people. I started uh, digging into technologies and stuff that I was really interested into. And all those things added a lot of value into uh, the things that I later will show to my employer, saying, I have social skills. I can work in a team. I am passionate about learning new technologies and applying them on the fly, looking for vulnerabilities and all that. I never won a CTF in my life. But still, I can show that I'm a capable person. Technically, I can present. I can show up at 8 a.m. in the morning in a suit and talk to a client. That's those kind of stuff. 
that you want to say to a client and, uh, and to, uh, to your employer and say, you should hire me because I add value. And finally, uh, before going into pen testing, after my master's, I did a two-year research project into cybersecurity, MERS training, and education. Uh, during those two years, during my KTP, I got my OSCP, and I practiced my skills, not by uh, my writing skills, not by having a blog, but by working on publications and writing on really on, uh, on a way that actually forces you to add meaning to everything you write down. So when it comes back to the consultancy work I do now, and it comes down to reporting, I find the value of on working on that kind of stuff. Because now, everything I write down for the client to read, I try to not put things that shouldn't be there. It's all about putting meaningful stuff down. And that's it. That's me. That's the story of my short life in the industry. And I hope it's been enriching for you. <laughs> Well, I thought that was excellent, uh, and I'm already seeing tweets from students saying um, that's I, some fantastic advice. So there you I would love a tweet. Twitter accounts, to be fair. But, I, uh, I would love yeah. a tweet about I shouldn't be tweeting right now, but I'm doing it. Yeah, that's it. Um, any questions for Juan? Oh, you're right here. Oh, hello. Why did you choose Napier? Like, there's other universities out there that do the same. What made you choose Napier? <laughs> no other universities. <laughs> uh, Rich, do you want to make a point here? <laughs> well, uh, it turns out researching masters from a foreign country when you're in Spain and you're finishing your dissertation is very time consuming. I jotted a few down. I had been to Edinburgh before. I love this city. so. Just having the opportunity to, to move here and to live here was a plus. Uh, Napier was one of the few that at the point, I think it was the only one in Scotland that was GCSQ certified or accredited. Is that accredited? accredited? Exactly. Okay. So it was basically the only one I found that was GCSQ uh, certified. Uh, I looked at the syllabus of different ones. I found it was interesting. It was in my price range, which is also an interesting thing to mind. And I basically applied to this one and one in Madrid. And I got accepted here. I never even looked at the Madrid one. I think I got rejected, but anyway. <laughs> so yeah, I had a few options on the table. I applied to a few of one, a few of them. So I got accepted to a, a by, by some of them. And one of them was Napier. It was like the city plus the syllabus plus the accreditation. I thought it would make sense to me. And that's, that's where I... I did that. Thank you. Any other quick questions for Juan? We can have a chat. Yes. Thanks very much. Oh, uh, quick question here. So OSCP be um, the thing that was important to Sakama? Well, it was definitely a difference showing up to an interview for pen testing saying I have OSCP compared to I don't have OSCP. I know some people in my company particularly that started doing pen testing and didn't have the OSCP. They started as juniors and then on their first months they worked their way through OSCP. And then after doing the OSCP they moved to juniors from consultant to consultant. The only thing that made a difference for me as far as I appreciate it is that I started on a bit of a higher level considered inside the company as compared to a complete beginner. But still, I don't think that was like a hard line saying if you don't have OCP, we won't hire you. I think there is pen testing companies that will hire people not expecting them to have OSCP and then say, we expect you to have it in your first six months. I've seen that happen. I think that aligns to what other pen testing, pen testing consultancies have said to us before, yeah. Okay, thanks We're very done? much, Juan. That was excellent. Oh, thanks to you guys.